The nations of the world will have to unite, for the next war will be an interplanetary war. The nations of Earth must someday make a common front against attack by people from other planets. General Douglas MacArthur. That was 1955, October. I was three or four months old. And they already had this plan for a false flag or a false INW threat from outer space that Werner Von Braun later spoke of. And now let's listen to Ronald Reagan at the United Nations. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Yes. The only way we can live together in peace is that if we're at war with someone else. I mean, it, this is, you know, of course, batshit crazy, but we, we have something here that is what is called an acculturation process, where over many decades there have been leaders that have been convinced that we have a threat and that the solution to that threat or incursion from other civilizations is to militarize the relationship. Now, interestingly, the same people who benefit from, say, hoaxing the Gulf of Tonkin event in Vietnam, in Vietnam which ex stampeded President Johnson into escalating Vietnam into the quagmire it became that cost trillions of dollars and hundreds of the millions of lives, if you count Vietnamese and Southeast Asians as living humans, which they are, um, or the famous weapons of mass destruction that Saddam Hussein had, which were to justify us going into Iraq, which gave us ISIS. It's all hoaxed. And so you have people who are continuously creating hoax scenarios. And this has actually got a very military sounding bureaucratic term, and it's called a deceptive indication and warning. Or a, or a false INW. And that's what the pop culture would call a false flag. And these are concocted in their research projects all the time, and they're put on a storyboard years, sometimes decades in advance. And the big one is the alien invasion. And so through the UFO subculture, Hollywood, the media, and the internet, there has been a very well-funded and clever disinformation counterintelligence operation that was launched in the 50s to convince people of what you just heard General Douglas MacArthur and Ronald Reagan decades later say was necessary. So then the question, you have to then take everything you've ever read, everything you've ever seen, and go, was it real or was it Memorex, as they used to say in the commercials? You know, was it, is it real or was it something that was made up for its psychological warfare value, and I'm quoting from a CIA document from 1953. To what extent have we been deceived? And so I think this is why we have to be brutally honest with ourselves. And I have had contact with ETs and I have also been targeted with what he's describing, both. And I know the difference. And, and I can tell you that it's quite clear the difference. Um, and the electromagnetic weapon systems that can induce an abduction state, uh, and then the things they can do are truly terrifying. And the same thing with the mutilations. You know, Dr. John Altshuler, who was a hematologist, pathologist in Denver, who was the original Snippy the Horse investigator back in the late 60s in Colorado, was a very good friend of mine. And uh, he concluded that those were 100% being done by paramilitary human groups made to look alien because they would frighten people, but they were also getting raw materials for their program life form labs that were in underground bases out there. And they were getting cell types and cells with high mitotic indices and things of that sort. And the tongue and the rectum and the genitals and what have you, because they reproduce quickly. And, but they would masquerade it as a UFO doing it. And he figured that out long ago. And then all of a sudden in the UFO subculture, an alien harvest. Well, no. <laughs> Actually, it's a paramilitary harvest, and we know exactly what they're doing with these problems.
body parts and we know why they're doing it. And they're very happy for people to think it was ET. That's how counterintelligence works. So if you want to study this issue, you cannot leave out. You can't just any, take anything at its face value. You have to question what part of it is real, what part of it is hoaxed, and why would they want people to think that there's a threat? What Reagan said, what General MacArthur said. Because, let's get back and follow on with what Paul Hellyer was sharing. How do you justify trillions of dollars in expenditures unless you have a bigger and more powerful enemy? You know, Leon Panetta, the CIA director for Obama for a period, and I provided a briefing to him, and you know, he said publicly, we're spending $110 billion a year chasing about 70, 70 Al-Qaeda people in Afghanistan. He literally admitted 70, 70. So in order for Halliburton to get their $150 a gallon for, for a piece of jug of water, no bid contracts, you gotta have this war going on. Cheney's old company, Halliburton. So this is all contrived, but the big one's coming. You ain't seen nothing yet, friends. If you think Vietnam was a, a, a disaster, or the Iraq war and ISIS and Afghanistan's a disaster, you just stay asleep and let this other one come rolling out over the public. So we have got to wake up and realize when we're being played and when we're being deceived and say no, we're going to opt for universal peace. And we're going to opt for a new civilization. Free energy, peaceful contact with these civilizations, the ending of these cabals, and the ending of the stranglehold that the gangbangsters have on this planet. By the way, the reason the secrecy is so entrenched, if you acknowledge that a UFO is real, man-made or ET, the first question is going to be, how is it operating? When that's asked, it will be answered, because we have the answers. When that's answered, it's goodbye oil, petrodollar, your public utilities, hydropower, solar, nuclear power, internal combustion engines in your car, jet engines, rockets, all of it, bang, obsolete. And we're talking hundreds of trillions of dollars in commodities that are traded on the, the Chicago Board of Trade, just in the commodities futures derivatives. That would be obsolete. You wouldn't need, when you know, need coal, you don't need oil. So, you can't have this subject come out without it also bringing out the sciences and technologies behind it, which is why they're desperate to keep it secret and to scare people with it and create all kinds of false flag things. And people say, when is the false flag event going to happen? I said, it happened. It's been happening since the 50s. We're, we're 60 years into a false flag operation. This is why we have to do disclosure. We have to do it now. We have to create teams to make peaceful contact that are non-militaristic with these civilizations. We must bring out these technologies to save the Earth's environment, and we have to liberate humanity from the gangbangsters. That's what has to happen. It's a very tall order, and we need every single hand on deck to do it, and I hope you will join us in doing so. Now, we're going to take a few questions. Or, yeah? I didn't know we were going to do Q&A. If you had the ability, do it. I think we have till 3.30. Hmm? Yeah, about 15 minutes. So if people have uh, any yeah. questions. Okay, what we're going to do is, um, so we just have 15 minutes. One question, okay. Myself and one of the volunteers over there, we'll get you a mic and we'll do the best we can. One question only, okay. I'll start. And, yeah, and just a question, not a soliloquy. Right, okay, please. Hello, thank you very, very much for being here. Um, so, something like the Corey Good stuff that we're all hearing about, the galactic wars that are going on, those are all false flag? Those are people that have been convinced that they're doing this? And, um, yes, I mean, well, well, we have to understand they're witting and unwitting people in this. Yeah. Okay, so. To, to, the, the, the quick answer is without talking about personalities. I really don't care. I like to talk about ideas, and not people. Um, there is great value in presenting this Manichaean 
us versus them cosmic view. All right, this is the cosmic expo, right? So the, the truth is many people have been in classified projects and been given experiences through these electronic systems that interface with consciousness that are absolutely real to them. Now, I remember in 1994 we'd meeting with a man that in the 50s had invented an electronic system that you, that you could wear so that you would be able to remote view in consciousness any place. But they also had turned it into a weapon system where they could give someone a consciousness experience of anything they want. We lost the power here. Um, and, and give any experience they wanted. And the man that I'm quoting here is a genius electronics engineer who was in his 80s and wanted to give this system to me. I didn't want to touch it. And he said, basically, if we want you to have a personal conversation with your personal God, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, whoever, you will have it. You will believe it's real. You will pass a lie detector test that it is real. That's how good it is. Werner Von Braun on his deathbed, in addition to warning about the hoaxing of an alien attack, actually said the only thing more frightening than that scenario and that plan is the electronic warfare systems that interface with thought and consciousness that can hoax experiences for people and that have been abused in this way. So what I'm saying is I don't, I'm not going to ascribe intent to anyone. I think a lot of this is very innocent. But I can say that there are people who are either witting or unwittingly purveyors of a narrative of conflict which is simply not there and for which there's not a scintilla of objective evidence. Um, the other point is that one of the problems is the, and I know I'm going to sound boring here, nobody knows science. So, you know, my uncle was. Grumman, Northrop Grumman designed the lunar module. I mean, I mean, we're a science family and I went, I go, yeah, but people don't even understand how this thing works. They just want to know they can push a button and make something happen. But when you start talking about interstellar and intergalactic technologies, the idea that there would be wars, I mean, it's great for Star Wars and it's great for George Lucas. He's made billions and billions of dollars on it. But the truth is, if you weaponize technologies that are a million years more advanced than our hydrogen bombs, you're going to detonate that sucker once on each side and everyone's gone. Your planet has turned into a pink mist floating through the cosmos. So the idea that there's going to be this sort of like cowboys and Indians doing this business, it, it's only because people don't understand what the science and technologies are behind transdimensional interstellar travel.